here we are. Hi. <laughs> we finally <laughs> made it happen. I love, yeah. thank you for coming to the garden of for course. a little chat. Thanks for having me. Um, of course, of course. We were talking about the films this year that really changed some minds, that really opened some minds, that really told some stories with what felt like some truth. Monica is one of those movies, it's almost like you're just watching people live their lives mm -hmm. in this truth. Is that how you felt? Is that how, when you were reading the script, when you came across it, that you felt the same way? Yeah, it was just, I, I felt like, oh, here's this beautiful portrait of this trans woman who um, has fended for herself for a long time. Mm -hmm. And this is not a, a story about her transition or finding her transness or figuring herself out. She knows who she is. Right. And, um, and she's had to, to care for herself for a long time. And then there's this phone call of this past life, of these, these people that, you know, she once knew. Mm -hmm. and, and what does she do with that? What does she do with the time left with her biological mother? Mm -hmm. and that was what I loved about her the most is that she's already lived a life as a woman, mm -hmm. as a trans woman. And um, she knows who she is. There's so much action between the dialogue. The dialogue is like almost this added bonus because there's so, you are acting with every glance. You are really having to embody this woman um, in this experience. How did Monica find you? How did you come to have this role uh, of, of really, I think of a first of its kind that we've ever seen this way. What is it a phone call? And they were like, Trace, okay, here, here's the deal. We wrote this for you. <laughs> no. And uh, come on down. We're going to start filming in a week. Uh, and uh, what, whatever your rate is, we got that. <laughs> Listen, that's what, see, now I think hopefully that's where I'm at. But right. know, this one I had to fight for. I, it was a long audition. You had to fight? Oh, yeah. I auditioned for at least a year for this. You're kidding. No. Okay, so now I read <laughs> that originally, correct me if I'm wrong, that Monica was supposed to be around 50s. Yes, she was an older trans woman, and uh, I got the script in December of 2016 uh, and started auditioning shortly after, and mm -hmm. it just kind of dragged on, and then I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, and, you know, I wasn't sure if we were going to get funding, and eventually we did. When you talk about auditioning for a role for over a year, what do you think it was that finally got them to see you as Monica? I think I had a really strong tape, a really strong self-tape. Yeah. Um, and that got me to see them in person and then I could show them more of myself. Right. I think the age of it all fell by the wayside eventually because they were like, it's more important to find the essence of Monica than it is this 10 year difference that we're worried about. Um, when I think about casting and everything I've gone through as an actor, a lot of the stress and the struggle that comes from the journey is trying to fit into these boxes that casting has for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm always telling people, look, if you can, try to focus on the essence of the character and cast off of that. Are there a lot of roles coming across your desk where you are seeing a trans woman's experience centered in film at this stage in their life, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can honestly it, say that is a no. Pretty rare. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare. Really? It's pretty rare. I, yeah, I can't even remember another that centered her in the title character this way. How long have you been standing there? Oh, I... Please, knock or just announce yourself as the proper thing to do when you're a guest in someone else's house. Sorry. I just came to see if you needed anything before. You're all dressed up. Yeah, I figured I would just step out for a little bit. Well, that's good. You know, you don't need to stay around all the time. I can take care of myself. I'm sorry you've been put in this position. What's your name? Again, please remind me. 
Monica. That's a nice name. Is it a family name? No. It's the name I chose for myself. Can we talk about Eugenia? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Patricia Clarkson? Yeah. Playing your mom? I know, right? Who made the phone call? How did you find out that she was going to be playing your mom? Or did you show up on set and it's like, okay. Oh, so this is mom. Yeah, well, Andrea gave me the heads up, the director. Mm -hmm. He was like, uh, Patricia's going to play your mom. Patricia's going to play your mom. And uh, I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. I know, I know her. Yeah, and right. And I ran into her. <laughs> I uh, ran into her at an uh, Emmy party, and she just came flying across the room like, my daughter. <laughs> Did she really? She just gave me a hug. She said, look at my beautiful daughter. She's going to play my daughter. And uh, we just clicked, you know. She's just, she's so emotional in the best way. Yes. And primal. Mm -hmm. And um, it was easy to drop in with her and explore on set. You know? Now, were there a lot of rehearsals? Because the, the, the scenes seem so raw. They seem so in the moment did you have a lot of opportunities to like get to know each other did you rehearse a lot and then no, neither all one that of kind us, of table reads no we didn't do a table read no rehearsals we just kind of were like let's just what jump in <laughs> let's <laughs> just jump in let's just jump in because she's very raw and i'm very the same you know we're just like let's just find it and see what happens and so a lot of what we used was the first take second take uh andre is very collaborative in that way too he he wants it to be organic, so anything that felt like over-rehearsed would just not have worked, especially right. with the lack of dialogue. Like right. Everything needed to be fresh. I'm curious about how the actual filming of scenes went when there was dialogue between two people in particular, because much of the film, you only see on screen one person's side, right? You see it yeah. kind of from the perspective of the other person in the scenario. Was it filmed so that you would be, you had coverage for both? Or did, did you guys always know that this scene, this scene is really Patricia's performance, you know what I mean? Or this scene is really Trace's performance? There were some scenes where I thought I was in frame and I was not in frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I just did all of that. <laughs> I just did all of that crying or whatever and they're on my shoulder, like, what was that? Okay. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, did all of know. that. Yeah, I mean, Andrea, he's <clears throat> he's so he's such an auteur. You know, he's like he's he likes his angles and his yeah. obscure, you know, voyeuristic kind of like view. A hundred percent. Kate Arismendi, the DP, is you know they're very in tune in that way, and so you know sometimes I'm like, well, it's my. What's is my arm in the shot? Like what? Am I in it out right. at all? Acting on? with your with your elbow. <laughs> a lot like, of elbow acting going like, on right here. Shoot. <laughs> what of me is in this frame? Yeah. I'm, I don't know what the lesson is there, but I just uh I try to just stay in the truth the whole time so that no matter how much of me is was in, in frame, that it wasn't coming across as false. She didn't recognize me. Well, did you expect her to? When are you gonna tell her? Or are you gonna tell her? I don't know. When do you believe Monica's mother recognizes her child for the first time? I think that's a, a thing that Monica constantly wonders about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like uh, when she asks her her name, when mm -hmm. she's stepping out on the town. You know, of course, there's the bathtub scene uh, where there's something's registering there, whether it's empathy for just being her caretaker or mm -hmm. is she recognizing me as her daughter, you know, her child. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, so that, that moment was so layered for me, for Monica. Um, and I had to just be in charge of 
that mix of feelings uh, because it wasn't cut and dry for her. At all? No. Ever? No. Like um, until the very last frame of the movie? Right, yeah. So I think it was a delicate dance to just like paint those colors and not spell it out. Um, because I think the lack of text, like I didn't want to step on that. Right. So I just wanted to let that be. You show up in such a way as a performer, as an actress, that you allow us to believe we're also there with you. And so our ideas, our experiences, our perspective is present right alongside Monica's in every interaction that she's having. Did you have moments where Trace bubbled up in, in Monica or Monica bubbled up in Trace? Yeah, I mean, I, I welcome those moments. I always try to bring myself to the role, uh, even if it's through a different shell yeah. than myself. Mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of, not a lot, but I think that's what some actors get wrong is that they're afraid to let th themselves shine into the character to become part of the character. Because mm -hmm. um, that's where the truth lives. And I think when you learn how to just be vulnerable in that way and, and fearless, because vulnerability is, is actually very brave, because you're like, I don't, hey, you can see all of it. Right. This is me. Right. Um, if you show up with that for your character, I think that the audience feels that, you know? And I always try to just bring the raw, bring the real, you know? I've had a very interesting life. Trace has had a very interesting life. Right. And I bring that to all my characters. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because that's my little secret weapon, you know? Can we talk about that a little bit? <laughs> we, and, and the reason I ask is because, like, the, in particular, your experience in ballroom, mm. uh, your life in New York, had, has prepared you in ways for stepping into this skin, stepping into the role of Monica. Yeah, I mean, it's a part of a long, longer journey. Uh, you know, ballroom, uh, you know, whether I'm selling face in front of a thousand people at a ball or uh, being a teenage drag queen in the clubs of Dayton, Ohio and Columbus. Right. Or, you know, the lead in the elementary school play, Melvin the Magnificent, from Melvin to Monica. I know that's you know? right. I mean, so, so. From Melvin. Hey, oh that's, hey, that's it. That's the journey. I right. don't know. I just it. I had a very interesting journey with entertainment, with finding my identity, finding womanhood, mm -hmm. and they're kind of all intertwined. One of the themes of this film is motherhood, mm -hmm. right? Is womanhood, and to know that you also were the mother of a house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's you, you, you do bring that to this. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, a moment where um, Monica's sister-in-law says to Monica pretty early in the movie, mm. you ever thought about having kids? You ever thought about adopting? Ooh. Yeah. What were those conversations like for you on set? That brings up a lot of feelings for me. And uh, I was able to just put that into Monica. Um, you know, it's just such a loaded question as a transsexual woman who, I'm single, I don't even have a partner yet. Like how am I gonna think about right. bringing a little one into this equation here? Right, like, right. I don't know, I mean, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. Um, I think about it sometimes. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just get a dog. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. I admit, I get it. <laughs> but it does bring up like feelings of, oh, well, oh, well, how am I gonna, get a kid if I don't even have a partner and oh that brings up loneliness and you know all that mm -hmm. all of that was going on for Monica too so, right you know. I've asked this question to many actors in particular I remember asking uh, Andra Day when she was playing Billie Holiday what was it like to let Billie go when it was time to give back to Andra and she was like, I'm not really ready to let her go. I don't, I don't want to let her go yet. Did you have an experience like that where it was time to let Monica go? Oh, no, I was ready. <laughs> Toodaloo. <laughs> I was ready. They gave me a Monica, like, gold um, necklace as a wrap gift. And yeah. 
I couldn't even wear it to the rap party. I said, I got to put You her, are lying. I have to put her down for a while. Is that right? I was done, yes, because it was, you know, Monica was so heavy. Yeah. It was such a heavy movie. Yeah. There were no light days. I was no either days. naked or crying or both on every single day I was on set. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, whether it ended, whether it ended up in the in the final, you know, cut or not. Right. But there was not for a, five weeks. Yeah. There was always some nudity or some crying or some some, some something going on. Um, so I was just ready to put her down. You know? Yeah. If knowing what you know now, being on this side of the experience of Monica, mm. would you have taken on this role, mm. would you do it all over again? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, in a heartbeat. Monica's a stepping stone on the on the timeline of trans representation. I mean, there's never been, it's, it's I don't wanna say never, but it's rare to see this, to see the title character played by a trans woman. Do you count yourself as one of the pioneers of that conversation, of that shift? I do feel that way. It's not, my favorite role <laughs> to play. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's really hard. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To break down doors. Um, constantly. Constantly. I mean, I feel like I'm losing my mind sometimes. And yeah. I have to just take a deep breath. What do you think it is that people are not getting? Oh, I think getting past the trans 101 of it all is something. I think that. Uh, our stories, because we're not a monolith, our stories are mm -hmm. so much broader and complex than we've been allowed to show. Right. And a lot of the mainstream is very like uh, visual or surface and they don't always dig deeper. And so they don't always peel back the layers mm -hmm. to figure out what more of our stories may look like and feel like. Right. And so Monica is like uh, a bit of hope. That, yeah, that okay. Some strike in the balance. They're ready of that. for more. Like, yeah. We can do more. Mm -hmm. They're ready for more, and and there are performers ready to take on those roles. Ready. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Be ready. Never. It is um, award season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the deep sigh. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Your soul. That was a that was a your soul See, went now somewhere. I'm red. Yeah. <laughs> what it's is award season? Monica is a part of that conversation. And and I know that you probably agree it is not a part of enough of those conversations. But what would a nomination for for you, for your cast, for this effort, for this movie, what would it mean to you? It would mean safety for me personally. Mm. Uh, it would mean another door open for the community. I think it would mean that all of the fights and stress, not so much in the making of Monica, but everything like after the fact, you know, uh, all of the, the struggle trying to get the right press. And, right, right. Um, just the same opportunities. I, it, would, it, would, it would mean that all of it was worth it. When you say safety though, what do you mean? Um, not having to live gig to gig so much or just knowing there will be X, X amount of scripts coming across my desk or just, yeah, having to fight so hard for every role. Mm -hmm. You did such a great job. Thanks. It is such a beautiful, hard, soft yeah. story. What would you want people to know about this film, this effort, this piece of cinema who maybe haven't seen it yet, haven't given it the chance yet. What would you want them to know or take away from this experience? Well, I've been telling people it's a good film to watch by yourself mm -hmm. because it's so delicate and quiet and you might get certain gifts watching it alone that you might not get if you watch with a big group. Yeah. Also, I hope people take away, uh, you know, if they don't have a trans person in their life, maybe they feel like they might walk away knowing one now. Mm -hmm. That's what I hope, anyway. I'm looking at queer culture becoming more and more mainstream, okay. more and more commercial, uh -huh. more and more universal. Um, with that comes more and more 
opinion, mm -hmm. right? As, as everything becomes more visible, so does critique. Yes. So does um, venom. Yeah. I'm curious how you feel, how you are navigating that. I try my best to like block out the noise. Yeah. Uh, because I am sensitive and if I take something in too much, it will affect me. It'll ruin my day. Right. And I can't, they don't deserve to ruin my day. I've been through too much to let them ruin my day. That part. <laughs> so um, I try to remember where it's coming from. Mm. And um, a lot of times it's insecurity, like right. on their part, mm -hmm. you know, and. Or I, ignorance even. Or ignorance and, you know, if it comes to critiquing my art, you know, art is not meant to be perfect. It's meant to be provocative. Mm. It's, it's meant to make people grow and shift and like provoke thought. And um, if it's coming towards, if it's, if it's a cri critique towards my existence, uh, I mean, that's not new either. And I don't, I don't really know <laughs> what to do with that except tell people to kick rocks. Like, <laughs> With <yeah>. open toe <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so you just got to keep going. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, love. You are the bomb. You are the bomb. If you have not gone to see Monica, get your ass up right now. <laughs> click, click through some of these buttons and go get the movie right now. Do it. You'll be better for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. You are the bomb. Thank you. My goodness. Yes.